In this video, I'm going to talk about how to calculate member months. I'm going to go over what member months are and how you can actually calculate them using a methodology that we use at Tuva Health. So first, what are member months? A member month is a single month of eligibility for a single member, i.e. a patient. We use the term patient and member interchangeably at Tuva Health. So for example, patient ID 012345. Let's say they had medical coverage from January 1st of 2020 through March 31st of 2020. Well, this patient should have three member months assigned to them, which might look something like this. This is a member months table. It has a patient ID column and a year month column that denotes the member month. The year month is really just a concatenation of the year, the calendar year, and the month when the patient had eligibility. So how do you calculate member months? It's pretty simple, but if you haven't done this before, it can be somewhat complicated, or if you need a refresher, this might be helpful. There's two input data tables. The first is a calendar data table with three columns. The year month column should have every year month combination that is relevant for your data set. So in this case, we're looking at a data set that is from calendar year 2020, and so I have these 12 records. The month start date column is the full date representation of the first day of the month for each year month. The month end date column is the full date representation of the last day of the month for each year month. The second data table is eligibility data. Now your eligibility data looks might look something like this. Every, everyone's eligibility data is a little bit different. There's in, in eligibility data, there is one record for each eligibility span. An eligibility span is uh, just three pieces of information, a patient ID, an enrollment start date, and an enrollment end date. The enrollment start date and the end, the end date are what's referred to as the eligibility span. Now, in this example, um, this patient, 10002, has three eligibility spans or three records in the eligibility data. And these, rec these eligibility spans are non-overlapping. They first get eligibility in January of 2016 and lose it in January of 2018. They re then regain it in March of 2018 and lose it again at the end of March. And then they regain it in May of 2018 and lose it at the end of October of 2018. So now let's see how we can um, convert this eligibility data into member months. Uh, one of the methods that's most commonly used is, is what we refer to at Tuva Health as the full month method for calculating member months. And really what you're doing is it's a pretty simple join from your eligibility information, your eligibility table to your calendar table. In this case, we call the calendar table month start and end dates. Um, let's walk through exactly how this join works to calculate member months in an example. So again, suppose we have patient ID 012345, but this time let's assume that they have eligibility starting in January 1st of 2020, but it ends in the middle of the month, March 15th of 2020. The thing I wanted to point out here is this patient should still be assigned three member months under the full month method. What the full month method means is if, the, if a patient has uh, even a single day of eligibility during a given month, they're still assigned a full member month for that month. So let's um, use this, let's see how the join is um, actually working uh, using some example data here. So the join is, what the join is doing is it compares every record in table one, the eligibility data, uh, to every record in table two, the calendar data, and it evaluates whether each clause in the join is true or false. So in the in the eligibility data, we have our, our eligibility spans for patient ID 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but it's duplicated five times here. And this isn't what the eligibility data actually looks like, but behind the scenes, this is what the join is, is sort of doing under the hood. It's comparing this record across all of the records in the calendar table. And I'm not showing all of the records in the calendar table here, but I'm just showing kind of the 
um, records that are relevant to prove this example. Let's rearrange the columns slightly to make this the comparison of what the joint is doing a little bit easier to see. So we'll move enrollment start date next to month end date. That's the comparison of the first join. And we'll move enrollment end date next to month start date. That's the comparison of the second join. The first join asks whether enrollment start date is less than or equal to month end date. So is enrollment start date less than or equal to month end date? And it'll we'll go through and, and assign true false to all these dates. So in the first case, enrollment start date, January 1st, 2020, is not less than the month end date of December 31st, 2019. So that evaluates to false. However, every other comparison here obviously evaluates to true. The second join clause asks whether enrollment end date is greater than or equal to month start date. So is March 15th greater than or equal to December 1st, 2019? That evaluates to true and so on and so forth for many of the other records here. The last record though evaluates to false. March 15th, 2020 is not greater than April 1st of 2020. The resulting record set that the join returns is the set of records where both clauses evaluate to true. So this is the middle three set of records. However, these start these in, these columns in the middle here aren't really relevant for a member month table. So typically we'll just exclude those in the final member month table will look something like this. Thanks for watching this video. We're Tuva Health and we're democratizing healthcare analytics.